Mentally, I was taking a beating as well. I was not thinking right. I was the thinking all the wrong thoughts. I was thinking terrifying thoughts. I was thinking that God wouldn't come through for me. There were all kind of things that were happening during those years, the, the dark years. When I, when I came out of my, um, those dark years, I, I was a different person. I looked at life completely different. Um, I, I didn't see things the same anymore. And, and actually now that's a good thing because uh, I can tell when someone else is suffering with the same thing that I was suffering with. It um, took me a long time to admit that it was anxiety because I was having real um, physical symptoms inside of me. I was having uh, chest pains. I was having chest palpitations and heart palpitations. I was having this fight or flight nerve here. Just it, it would go off in the middle of the night uh, a lot of times, and it would just wake me out of a uh, um, a dead sleep. I remember um, sitting there with my family and uh, all my kids and my grandkids are having fun and, and just talking with one another and in my mind I'm feeling like I'm actually going to die. Well, hello again. So good to be with you today, and uh, I'm glad that you're tuning in to this video blog. We've got a lot of people who keep signing on every week, and uh, a lot of people need encouragement. So I would also encourage you to pray for each other because uh, there's a lot of us out there that have suffered with anxiety and, and living this way. And I'm here to tell you today that you don't have to live that way anymore. Um, I want to redo the blog that I did uh, last week because uh, our cameras were we messed up last week and just thought we could do a better job of it. And anyway, so we're going to go over some of the stuff we did last week. And one of the things I talked about is that in my life, a lot of times uh, during my bout with anxiety, if you want to call it that, the, the dark years is what I call them. Um, one of the, the main things that, that happened to me during that time, one of the main problems that I had was being fearful. Um, I want to I want to just read you a portion of scripture today found in 1st John chapter 4 verse number 18. The Bible tells us there there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. For many years of my life as I well, since I was a kid even, I mean, I, I always lived as a what-if thinker. I always lived as someone who always wanted to be out there in front of any potential problem that may happen. I, uh, whenever uh, I got married and uh, Sam and I started having children, and um, I was always fearful of some, that something may happen to them. I, I mean, I didn't even let my kids drive until they were 18, and they still uh, are bitter at me towards that. But um, I was just petrified that they were going to die in a car accident. And so I just held off as long as I could. I remember just always trying to be out in front of any potential problems that may happen. So I lived my life by the question, what if? What if this happens? What if that happens? What if... What if this takes place? And even it crept into my thinking as a pastor for many years. What if this family leaves? What if, what if we don't make the budget this year? What if, what if, uh, what if, what if the church splits? What if all these, you know, what if, what if, what if all the time? And 
my life became the question, what if? That's how I lived my life, was by that question. And one of the problems with living that way is, is that it contradicts a life of faith. And the Bible tells us that he who fears has not been made perfect in love. And let's face it, a person who lives by what-if thinking all the time, we are fearful people. We are always afraid that something may happen. And basically that's what led to me having, well, what the world would call is a nervous breakdown. Um, because finally, my brain uh, told my body that there is something wrong. And so... Um, it, my body went on defense mode 24-7, and during that time is when I began to have all the chest palpitations, the fight or flight nerve going off, the ringing in my ears, the, the dizziness, and just the constant fear that I was going to die, the constant fear that I was going to um, have a heart attack or a stroke or a wreck. I got to where I couldn't even drive my car like I've told you in a previous uh, blog, but today... I want to talk to you from the perspective that fear, the Bible says there is no fear in love. He says perfect love casts out fear. 365 times in the Word of God, God says not to fear, not to be afraid, or fear not, or however He puts it, He tells us not to live in fear. And um, we're in good company, those of us who have known what it's like to live in fear, because um, there's a lot of people in the Word of God who struggle with the same things. I, I think about Abraham and how uh, he was also a man who, who lived in fear, even though the Bible talks about him as being a man of faith. And he did eventually become a man of faith because, let's face it, only a man of faith would take his only son, his miracle child, up on Mount Moriah and, and almost sacrifice him just because God told him to do it. And you know the story. I'm glad that that God didn't let him go through with it, but it was a test of his faith. But early on in life, we see Abraham living as a man of fear, as a what-if thinker. He, he had the king of Gerar uh, to believe that, that Sarah was actually his sister instead of his wife. He said, why? Because he might kill me. He did that not once, but he did that twice. And he, he, he lied about that because he was thinking, what if they kill me? I'm, I'm, I need to stay out in front of this potential problem. And so thinking of what if they kill me? What if they do this? What if they do that? He caused his wife to lie. And then we see it's a family pattern because later on in his son Isaac's life, his son Isaac did the same thing. So listen, if this can happen to Abraham, this can certainly happen to us. I lived my life in fear for many years. And in 1 John, where we started off today, it says that he who fears has not been made perfect in love. One of the reasons we live in fear, one of the reasons we become what-if thinkers is because we don't understand how much God loves us. God loves us enough. God loves us more than, than anything. God loves us. We are His, His treasure. And listen, He gave up His most valuable treasure so that you and I could live in a life of peace, so that we could be part of His family, so that we could, we could live in rest. To live in fear constantly brings torment, and I know how it feels to live like that. I was a what-if thinker since I was a little boy. Somewhere in my childhood, I got the idea that I was on my own, and that I couldn't trust anybody, couldn't trust anything, couldn't trust God. And so I lived my life as a what-if thinker. We fear because we don't have a right understanding of God's love. I wish that I somehow could explain how much God loves you, but words just fail. Uh, we don't even have the words to describe how much God loves us. See, we can get caught up in this thing of living in fear, and the Bible tells us there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, and that's the love that God loves us with is a perfect love. And if we live in fear all the time, one of the main problems is this. We're not understanding the love of God for us. And living in constant fear all the time contradicts a life of faith. It just doesn't go along with it. And God tells us to, to live by faith. And He tells us the just shall live by faith. He says in Romans, whatsoever is not of faith is sin. He tells us in Hebrews, he that cometh to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. 
God tells us to live by faith. God tells us to trust Him. And when we live in constant fear, like it or not, we are not trusting God. We fear because we don't have a right understanding of how much God loves us. If we understood truly how much God loved us, then I believe it would wipe away fear. Because why? Because when we understand how much God loves us, when we understand His love for us, we trust Him. We rest in Him. We live in His peace. But when we don't trust Him, when we're out there trying to do it all ourselves, when we're living by the question, what if... That totally goes against the life of faith. And God wants us to live at rest. Being afraid of God is not the same as fearing God in a reverent and respectful manner. The Bible does tell us to fear God, but it's talking about revering Him, holding Him in a place of awe, recognizing His power, recognizing who He is. But listen, God didn't give us His own Son so that we could be afraid of Him all the time. I mean, how many of you who are parents would like it if your children were always afraid of you? If they were afraid to ask you for something? If they were afraid to tell you how they felt? If they were afraid to tell you if they were sick or not? If they were afraid to, to even be in your presence? That would be terrible. None of us would want to put our kids through that. Listen, God didn't want to put you through that either. God gave us, gave us His own Son in our place so that we could have a relationship with Him that is peaceful, a relationship that is at rest. Listen, when Jesus died on the cross, the payment was made, and we once again can have peace with God in spite of our sin. Listen, being afraid of God is not the same as fearing God in a reverent and respectful manner. God loved us so much that he, he gave us His only Son on the cross. Why in the world would He want us living in fear all the time and not being able to trust Him? I mean, He gave us His own Son. He said we can't trust Him. Listen, God is totally trustworthy. So stop living in that what-if thinking. Stop living in fear all the time. You don't have to. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. The apostle put it like this. He said, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? And then later in that verse, he said, Who is he who condemns? Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. In other words, he was asking, Who's going to condemn you? Stop living in guilt. Stop living in fear. Who's going to condemn you? There's nobody left to condemn you. Jesus paid your price. And not only that, is He's intercessing for you right now at the right hand of His Father. Can you, have you thought about that lately? That God is interceding for us? That Jesus is, is interceding and speaking on our behalf? And then he goes on to ask the question in Romans chapter 8, verse 34. He says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? That's a good question. Who can separate us from from the love of God. Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? The Apostle Paul had come to a conclusion in his life. He'd come to a realization, and he said, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Guys, when, when, when God gave us Jesus on the cross and He died for us, and if, when we trust Him as our Savior, God forgives our sins as if nothing ever happened. God loves you today. We have no reason to fear. We have no reason to live as what-if thinkers. We have no reason to keep on fearing every day, every little thing that comes along, because perfect love casts out fear. And if you and I can understand the love of God, if we will start to believe how much He really loves us, you'll be surprised at how much fear will leave your life. Perfect love casts out fear. Do you believe that God loves you that much? Because that's one of the greatest things in my life that helped me overcome anxiety was simply understanding 
how much God loves me. Hey, I love all of you myself, and I can't wait to be with you again. Thanks for tuning in today. Hey, share this with somebody. I know that everybody is touched by somebody in their life who suffers with anxiety, who is a, or who is a fearful person. Maybe you could direct them to my YouTube channel or my website and, and, and tell them, this guy teaches on this very stuff. He's been through it. And maybe it'll be an encouragement to you. Until next time, go with the love of God because you can never go wrong. Thank you.